Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. In today's matchup, two cornerbacks will be looking to shut down one side of the field. It's McCourty's Browns going up against Davis's Colts. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. And we welcome you to Lucas Oil Stadium, which opened back in 2008 here in the Circle City of Indianapolis, Indiana. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Cleveland Browns. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. The children will groan. It's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. To return, it's George Atkinson. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading the troops out there on the field is Cody Kessler, the second-year quarterback out of USC. Yeah, made eight starts as a rookie. Don't be fooled by his record because he didn't get any wins during that time. He's a guy who knows how to distribute the football just like a true point guard, something that he did very well in high school and basketball. But this guy gets the ball around, moves it, and is very accurate with it. Only two interceptions in 2016. This is Isaiah Crowell. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And a look now at the starting offense for the Browns. 2016 was a very tough year for Cleveland offensively, but head coach Hugh Jackson, who also handles the play calling, has high hopes for 2017 with a revamped offensive line and his creativity in play calling. Again, it's Crowell. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. gun Kessler and it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect and that's a great opening series defensively you force what should be a three and out on your opening possession and great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth the eighth year man from Tennessee this is Britton Colquitt on to punt Chester Rogers deep for Indianapolis This will be fielded at the 17. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. The man under center in his second year now out of NC State, it's Jacoby Brissett. He's a third-round pick in 2016 and actually won his first NFL start against Houston in a shutout, 27 to nothing. He's a guy who has great mobility, a big right arm, and is very cerebral in his approach. Now 
Now the first carry here for Frank Gore. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Here's the offense, and if you're the defense, Charles, you really have to focus on that guy that's highlighted on the screen. You're talking about pure speed. T.Y. Hilton can get down the middle of the field and really stretch a defense. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Another carry now for Gore. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, and now he bowls him over. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. When you look at Cleveland's defense in 2016, it's pretty easy to isolate where their problems began. 31st in the league against the run. They finished 31st overall in total defense as well. So you have to start with them shutting down teams running the football to give themselves a chance to make some plays in the passing game. Try to throw now. Brissett. And the reception made by Dante Moncrief. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. lining up first and ten. Let's go! One, nine. One, nine, nine. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Carl Nassim in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. throw for Brissett. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jamar Taylor. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Browns defense has a touchdown. 
And on that one, with six defensive backs, did he need to be more careful throwing the football? I mean, I guess obviously in hindsight he did, but. <laughs> yeah, hindsight, but even in foresight, when you get six defensive backs on the field, you just know you're going to get multiple coverages. You're never sure what you're going to see. But the biggest one is you don't have much reaction time for your receivers to go get the football because those guys, they're the best cover guys on the field. They go get it. And on that play, they took it the other way for six points. Cody Parkey is on now for the point after. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Colts getting ready to go. here on first down. Rush coming and he's taken down. Desmond Bryan with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Second down, this is Gore. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They go play action with Brissett. And incomplete on the deep ball. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. In his fifth year from UCLA, here's Jeff Locke to kick it away. Duke Johnson deep for Cleveland. That's taken on the 25. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Right, here we go. Green, 
A fake to Crowell. Now it's Kessler. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Marcus Hunt in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. On second down, here's Crowell. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. And now a look at the defense for the Colts. When you look back at the 2016 season on defense for the Indianapolis Colts, when you look at the raw numbers, you're not impressed. 30th overall in total defense. So what they're trying to improve upon is playmakers. They've got to have some guys who can offset those types of numbers with making big plays and taking the ball away from the opposition. And with a third and 14, we have six defensive backs out there now defensively. Working from the gun, Kessler. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth. Now it's first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle a team a little bit as well. Pass interference ruined that series of downs for them. So the offense has it first and ten. Kessler and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack the former Brown Jabal Sheard coming hard on the blitz he dumps him for a loss of eight well that play was the very definition of fast quick and in a hurry suddenly he was there yeah, blink of an eye that happened fast and a big sack Second down, here's Kessler. Well, this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. And now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. That's going to set him back five yards. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Shotgun snap, Kessler. And that is incomplete. Are we on the same page here, partner? Because I think they have the right idea. Just take what you can get on third and forever. Yeah, in real life, I'd say yes. It's just these video games are tempting. You want to go downfield with it. I like the way you've evolved. Yeah. You know, you've learned how to play it the Madden way. Here's Britton Colquitt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And, boy, it's another boomer. 
And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, OK, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. throw for Brissett. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. He got 29 yards that time. So here we go, first and 10 now. Gore. <laughs> and shedding through the tackle. And he's brought down. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play caller, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. now out of the gun and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain five yards on the pickup and that's going to bring up a third down kid had a ton of success here so far but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one yeah even on that one there was a little bit of a hole but it closed there quickly at the end now they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down the gun percent a dump down to turban First down, it's goal. 
And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Off the corner. Where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. <laughs> I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in a run game. No gain. Second down, Brissett. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Give him two yards on that play. And just like that, it's third down. Frank Gore, the ageless one, over 1,000 yards last year. He's the first running back age 33 or older to top 1,000 since John Riggins way back in 83. So what he's done is he's made the case for running backs who are approaching 30 that there is life on the other <laughs> side of that number because many think once you hit 30, you're going to decline. The Colts on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and eight. Here we go. Right at right. From the gun, here's Brissett. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. Kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Kessler on first down. Britt's got it complete. And down he'll go at the 25. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Career highs and receptions, carries, and total yards last year for Crowell. His total yardage was 952. That was the highest by a Cleveland Brown running back since 2010. And that sounds impressive, but I think there's much more out there for him. If Cleveland plays even with people, not from behind, he'll get more carries, more touches, and his yardage will go up. 
The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. They've got a third down and a yard to start things out. Kessler on the bootleg. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A gain of seven, and they pick up the first. Brandon, more and more offenses are going to the philosophy of using every inch of the field to try and spread things out. And when you're running back and catch the ball as well, that can only help your offense. Carry now for Crowell. Finding some room at midfield. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That good for 19 and a first down. But we know one thing. Isaiah Crowell can run if given an opportunity. Had the longest run in the NFL in 2016. An 85-yard touchdown sprint week two against Baltimore. This one not quite as long. Didn't end in six, but still a great game. Staff's doing a good job upstairs. They'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Kessler looks to throw on second down. He's got a man. It's Corey Coleman. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. Boy, did he announce his presence with authority to start his rookie year. 104 yards, two touchdowns in the season opener, and then the year got derailed a little bit by injuries. But I think the folks in Cleveland think that he has that number one potential, don't they? I, I would think that they are correct. Corey Coleman downfield, he can create big plays. Carry here for Johnson. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20 yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job. Keep it up. And we'll break that one soon. Second down, here's Kessler. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a <laughs> chance at all. Way easier said than done. Kessler now off the bootleg. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. 
Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. They go back to the ground now with Crowell. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Second down, Kessler. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Marcus Hunt in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Stare up now at a third and long. Kessler and company needing something big after the sack. From the gun, it's Kessler. And that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Parkey's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10 to 3. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. now following the made field goal to kick this one off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. A little juke. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. 
Here's Brissett. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Jeff Locke now as he'll punt it away for the second time. punt with the coverage holding him to three on the return and possession will switch hands first and ten Cody Kessler and the Browns heading back out on offense and I guess the question Charles is what's the formula for keeping him better protected because as we see the protection it struggle and normally what you get is renewed determination when, when, when the big guy gets hit that usually sparks people hey we can't let this happen anymore they take it personally He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. There we go now. On first and ten, here's Kessler. And he's going to be out of bounds at the 39. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. This is Crowell, and he's got room. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. stopped immediately there officially no gain on the play and it's second down so nothing there I don't know that that's all in the back though you got to look at blocking there don't you I would agree with that totally at some point they have to win at the point of attack instead it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain now Kessler throwing on second down Going deep for Kenny Britt. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. He's got his tight end in Joku. A good pick up there of 20 yards. David and Joku, nearly 17 yards a catch in college. Those are wide receiver numbers. Yeah, went to Miami. Brad Kaya was his quarterback. They were a really good combo. Also, how about the wingspan of the young rookie? 35 and a quarter inch arms. Quarterbacks love that. That catch radius, huge. And what he does after the catch, really impressive. Kessler on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And 
He gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. It's Crowell, and only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Browns on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Kessler. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one. This from 44 yards out now. And Parkey's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. now following the made field goal to kick this one off. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen. The defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost, but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. They'll run it now out of the gun, and yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. They'll run. This is Robert Turbin. 
And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Give him three on the play, and it'll be third down. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Now Brissett. Now they go screen. It's complete. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. That one 28 yards on the ground. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. set on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And oh, he coughed it up. And this is picked up by the Browns. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And we shift our focus to Isaiah Crowell. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Kessler trying to lay one up deep and that one falls incomplete looked like he might have had position there but he couldn't hold on it at second down Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment but let, let's face it that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in yeah nice job to force the incompletion looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Let's go! 319! 319! Out of the gun, Kessler. That's in Joku over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. And now prior to this third and one, we're going to get a timeout here as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Here we go. Green, 39. 
Working from the gun, Kessler. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Detroit, Detroit. Kessler to throw once more. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. That's on the guard, Kevin Zeitler, first-round pick back in 2012. going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Right, here we go. From midfield, here's Kessler. And a quick throw here. That's complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. The Browns on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. To throw again is Kessler. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Cleveland. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, 
you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And he'll be taken down at the 18. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Again, they run again. It's Gore. And a big tackle there as the defender runs right through him at the 21-yard line. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Colts trail at home at halftime. The Browns have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Midway through the first, Brissett's under pressure and throws the pick. Browns take it back all the way for the score. The Browns now on top. Now to the middle of the first. Sheard's got the sack here. This will go for a loss of eight. Set up now third and seven. Brissett's on point with the throw, and he'll end up at the 25-yard line before being tackled. Colts would later turn it over on a fumble. So that'll do it from here. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles. They've got the second half from Indy. Brandon. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this you're is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. They go play action here on first down. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. That one goes for 24 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gore. And they go backwards here. Losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, that's pretty symptomatic about how things have gone here. That play was just shut down right from the start. And not going to give them a lot of confidence to help turn things around.
A second down throw for Brissett. It's caught by Moncrief. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The Colts on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. Let's go! One, To throw is Brissett. And this is going to be incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. And tough starting field position here. Play fake to Crowell, now Kessler. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. A first down throw for Kessler. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to his tight end, David Njoku. And it's second down. So second and ten here. They'll run with Crowell. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Well, they know how to protect the pass, but sometimes cornerbacks, they can also stop the run, can't they? Is that what we call a complete corner? Yeah, because we're so used to these guys just being defenders in the pass game. How about the guys who can come up and make the tackles? That's what we just saw there for no gain, too. Play fake to Johnson. Now Kessler. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And 
And now Indianapolis set to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Time to establish the run game. It's Gore. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. But well, he was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. He's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the nine yard line. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Let's go. On third down, Brissett. Gets past one man and avoids the contact by sliding. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. for three to the 29. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go! And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense. But a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long. That he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Sets up a third and one. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. The Colts on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. They're up against a third and one situation. Robert Turbin, and he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. 
That was a tremendous group effort there because when you talk about offensive lines, the best ones, talk about guys that play in harmony, in sync, and getting things done, and they did that on that play. Yeah, especially on third and one. Got to be in sync, and they were. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Let's go! One, nine, one. They'll run again here with Turbin. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Now, this will be the ninth play on this drive. They'll try to throw now. Brissett. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. We always look for breakout seasons, and Jack Doyle had one in 2016. 59 catches. What? He didn't even have that in the previous three seasons. No, previous three, 35 combined. But he was stuck behind Kobe Fleener for a while. He went to New Orleans, really opened things up, didn't it? Yeah, and Dwayne Allen's been shipped off to New England, so Jack Doyle truly tight end one. Brissett now. And he's got his man, Hilton. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Brissett to throw on first. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. That throw good for four. It's second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Oh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. They'll throw again. Brissett throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and six. Play action. Brissett. The ball comes out. And will they call it a touchback? No, it's out at the one yard line. They were inches there from blowing a golden scoring opportunity. And I have to admit, partner, that I often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. And the seemingly endless drive continues. They'll try and push it in with Gore. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Every year I go to the combine to marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Hey, let's go. Brissett now on second down. Under pressure, down he 
he goes. Sacked at the 10. Jamie Collins leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. When you're this close to the goal line, you've got to expect pressure from the defense. So the ball's got to come out fast. Got to get out of his hands quicker. The offense on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. And it appears to me that someone's defensive coordinator is jockeying for a raise. A sack on second and goal, a sack on third and goal, now brings up a decision on fourth down. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now he's got a convoy, and he might be gone. He's at the 40, past the 20, 10, touchdown, Cleveland. Now Parkey for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Off offense. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. the penalty it's Gore and he'll work his way forward up to the 22 give him a couple on the run there it'll be second and 13 
this is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter. sent the intended receiver and it's third down well they're slinging it and then there's one you got to put a timer on huh i mean that one came in hot that yeah, came in hot but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. And yeah, that'll set them back five. Still third down. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. From the gun, here's Brissett. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Jeff Locke now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And out will come the offense as they take over. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They begin with a run by Crowell. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Browns on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and 10. Johnson. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah. 
Here's Britton Colquitt now. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the seven yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And not great starting field position here for the offense. A first down throw for Brissett. The Philip Dorsett hauls it in. And they're going to get this one up past the 25. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Set. Left side, it's Dorsett. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Brissett on first down. Completes it to Moncrief, left side. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Emmanuel Ogba in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. Come on, let's go! White nine! White nine! Brissett from the gun on third. And that is incomplete. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards.
A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Here we go. One, nine, one. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to look for Moncrief, and it's intercepted. It's Jabril Peppers, the rookie from Michigan. <laughs> Defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. After the interception, here's Kessler. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. That time they were looking for the former Auburn Tiger, Ricardo Lewis. And that'll bring up second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Personal foul, face mask, defense. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. After the penalty, it's Crowell. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Isaiah Crowell, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Browns take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Offensive line coaches always tell their guys, if we score touchdowns, that means we get to the end zone first. That's exactly what those blockers did, clearing the way for their back. And the lead is now 24. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Here's Parkey now set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had a victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one, but... Let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Here we go. 
Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Doyle. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Three yards remaining here on second down. Here's Bissett. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Doyle. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. The interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. So that one will be accepted. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Set again. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. Fresh set of downs here. Incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. A second down throw for Brissett. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And here comes play number six on this drive. Brissett. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. So this is what happens when you throw interceptions. That confident veneer that you have gets chipped away a little bit. Maybe a little bit gun-shy throwing it around. Yeah, under-throwing him there, and you're right. Those interceptions may be in the back of his mind. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. Offense. 
And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off. It's the Pro Bowl corner. Joe Hayden with it. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They built up that lead at intermission, and they're just continuing to pour it on right now, aren't they? Locked into a really good groove right now. I don't know if it's just the play calling. I know the execution is really, really sharp right now, and all the playmakers are doing exactly what you expect. They're making plays, and right now, defense has no answer and no chance of catching up. Now they're just looking to turn anywhere for a stop defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Good gain there on first down. That keeps them in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front. Good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They'll try to run for it with Crowell. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They're just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage. The stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. They'll run it with Johnson. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. On second down, Johnson, and he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. So he runs it for one yard, then no gain. I don't know that you go back to that well here on third down. Yeah, I don't know that you do as well, but if you want to get the ball to him, if you want him to have it, maybe you get him into space and throw it to him. Ah! On third down, Kessler to the flat that's complete to his running back time for a break back to finish it off on EA Sports after this so the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset and let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This from 54 yards away. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. 
It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. And the Colts coming out now. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. They go with a screen to Gore. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. A second down throw for Bissett. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Third down, Brissett. He's going to let it fly. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Here's Jeff Locke now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And the Browns getting set to go. They have the big cushion. Here in the final stages of this one, I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be, because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Marcus Hunt getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. So a penalty that can frustrate a coach so much, a mental error, and it'll back him up five yards. Here we go now. 
On second down, here's Crowell. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. That'll net seven yards on the ground, but it'll leave him with a healthy distance still to go on third down. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and it may be a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. So long, everybody.